I recently re recently received this uh, G716 Ganzo knife uh, from Gearbest. I really love the look and the blade shape on this, and I love the deep carry pocket clip. But there's some things that I don't love so much about it. Uh, number one, uh, for some, this uh, texturing on the on the handle would be great, but I find it extremely aggressive, uh, especially here under the pocket clip. I think it would really tear up my pants if I put it in my pocket. The axis lock is pretty stiff. That's often the case on these Ganzo knives. Um, it's got a glass breaker here, and it's pretty pointy. And uh, when I go to use the axis lock, it, lock, it uh, digs into the meat of my hand. So I'm not crazy about that. Uh, the heel of the blade here, you can see where the, the grind is extended up onto the blade because the, uh, the blade thickens right here. I think it really needs to have a, a choil put in there so that we can uh, sharpen it evenly right up to the, the heel. And you may not be able to see it very well, but the, uh, the secondary bevel, well, it's, it's okay. It's not, uh, it's not particularly even, especially up here towards the tip. So I think those are all things that are, are fixable for somebody that's fairly handy. I'm going to give it a shot. First thing to do, of course, is going to be take it apart. Excuse my hand being in the way. Pull off the uh, scale screws. These are T6 Torx, and uh, I'm, I'm not a magician here. I pre pre loosened these just so I'm not going to be fumbling around here on camera. The uh, pivot screw is a T8. Pull that out. Now the scale should lift off. There we go. And this is the spring here that's responsible for the the axis lock. And uh, these springs are, are pretty stiff as they come from the factory. Flip it over. There we go, completely disassembled. Now I'll put everything into a, a baggie so we don't lose any of the parts and uh, go up to the shop and start the hacking on her, see what we can do to tune it up. Okay, we're at the workshop now. Uh, I've just got some uh, 180 grit emery paper here. I'm just going to smooth this off by hand. Now, full disclosure, I've never done this before, so I might totally screw it up, but you know what, $20 knife, if I screw it up, well, I'm out $20, but maybe I've got $20 worth of experience. So I think what I'm going to do is do the rest of it off camera and when I've got her done I'll see you again. Okay, I got the uh, scale sanded down. I started out with a 180, finished up with 220 and then uh, I was brushing them off with a inexpensive brass brush and it left a nice uh, brassy patina on it so I did it uh, fairly heavily. I think it looks kind of cool. Okay, now I'll uh, see about putting a troil in here, a sharpener's troil, right here. I've uh, 
colored it in, filled it in with a, a bit of uh, black sharpie just to give myself a, a guide on where I want to remove material. Okay, so I like to use an abrasive wheel just to make a initial rough cut down. Okay, and now I'll use a inexpensive diamond burr to uh, round it out a little bit more. Okay, now I'll just use a, uh, a fine stone to break the edges. Now we'll just polish it up a little bit. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, since I got the polisher out, might as well uh, polish up some of the surfaces that bear against each other. Uh, specifically, the uh, this area here on the tang. Okay, now I've got the axis bar clamped up. I'll see if we can uh, give that a bit of a polish too. Okay, so, uh, off camera, I polished up the pivot area on the blade, and uh, of course, on camera, did the uh, the back of the tang. I also polished the uh, pivot area and the liners and we've got the uh, area here for the axis lock polished up and uh, these liners are sort of ambidextrous so uh, I did both sides and I uh, polished up the uh, the axis bar as well so the only thing that's left actually there are two things that, le that are left I uh, uh, ground the point off the the glass breaker. Uh, I tried a file, and a file wouldn't touch it. So uh, kudos to Ganzo for using the hardened steel for the glass breaker, and to use a little grinding wheel on the Dremel tool. So the uh, axis bar is polished up. The only thing that's left now is to adjust the tension on the Omega Spring. trick. I learned from uh, Canadian Cutting Edge when you're doing this you mark the original shape like so and to decrease the tension they just need to be squeezed in a little bit a bit more than that nothing's happening there bit more I can give that a try okay we'll put those back in uh, reassemble the knife and give it a try so uh, rather than uh, take you through the painful process of uh, reassembling an axis lock I'll do that off camera and uh, come back when that's done, minus all the cursing. Okay, it's back together and 
I've got all my fingers and I didn't lose my temper once. So going over the changes that I've made, put the little choil in here. So you can see that now when we sharpen we can come right to the end of the uh, cutting edge. Smooth out the scales. And I've uh, rounded off the, the glass breaker. May not be as effective as a glass breaker anymore, but uh, that's okay. I carry a dedicated glass breaker in my vehicles anyway. And now that the uh, the axis lock is much easier to work. So, the only thing that's left is to uh, fix up the edge here, and I don't think that's something we need to go over in this video. That's just a standard sharpening chore. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I didn't make too many mistakes to upset you all.